Hello, my name is Takeshi Takahashi. I am from National Institute of Information and Communications Technology. Today, I would like to present my work, which is conducted jointly with professors Christopher Krugel and Giovanni Wigner from University of California, Santa Barbara, Professor Katsunari Yoshioka from Yokohama National University, and Daisuke Inoue from National Institute of Information and Communications Technology. The title of this talk is Tracing and Analyzing Web Access Path Based on User Site Data Collection. How do users reach malicious URLs? In this talk, I will talk about the background of this work, dataset, hazardous path reconstruction scheme, analysis of the first accesses of the hazardous path, and preemptive domain filtering scheme. Now let's move on to the background of this work. Here is the background. Web access is a major channel of malware infection. Many techniques have been considered to cope with this issue, including blacklist, whitelist, and machine learning based assessment techniques. However, there are still users who get access to these sites. To better protect users, we need to know how users reach these malicious websites by collecting large-scale web access records and by analyzing them in detail. In this work, we collect users' access records and analyze their access path to better protect users. First, we collect users' access records through our browser extension. Then we reconstruct the access path by analyzing the records. Then we analyze the entry points of hazardous path, which are the path leading to malicious URLs. Finally, we introduce our preemptive domain filtering scheme, which identifies domains that often lead to malicious URLs. Now let's talk about our data set. To collect large-scale data for in-depth analysis, we prepared a browser extension that runs on Chrome browser. To motivate people to keep using the extension after its installation, we used a popular character called Tachikoma, as you can see in this slide. The extension records each user's access record and shares information to our server periodically. The server sends the collected URLs to the Google Safe Browsing once a day and stores the evaluation results internally. Here are the list of information we collected. We have collected user ID, tab ID, URL, tab URL, source tab ID, timestamp, referral, resource type, tradition type, and Google Safe Browsing evaluation results. Resource type identifies the type of resources such as mainframe, subframe, script, and image, and the identification relies on the Google Chrome's API. Transition type identifies the reasons of transition, such as bookmark access, address typing, and link access. And the identification relies on the Google Chrome's API again. One of the biggest advantage of our data collection is that we can obtain user ID and tab ID. They are useful to identify users and types of the logs. Therefore, we can minimize the scope of analysis by filtering logs with the user ID and tab ID. That makes it easy for us to analyze large-scale web access logs. Before conducting this work, we also considered ethical issues by consulting with our internal review board and ensured that our usage of the logs was ethical and respectful of users' privacy. This slide shows the overview of our dataset. We have collected the web access records from February 1st in 2019 till January 31st in 2020. In total, we have collected about 4 billion access records, among which 76,000 records are the access records to blacklisted URLs. In terms of the number of users, we have collected logs of 1,650 users per month, among which 
115 users reached malicious URLs. The graph shows the number of active users in each month. Please note that an active user is a user who has sent at least one web access request. Now we have got the data set. As a first step to analyze the web access records, we reconstruct it as the path, which are the path to malicious URLs. Next, I would like to explain our hazardous path reconstruction scheme. To reconstruct hazardous path, we iteratively trace previous accesses until we reach an entry point. Entry point is discontinuous from its previous access. Therefore, if the access is originated by bookmark access, session reconstruction, web search, omnibus access, address typing, or start page access, we see the access as the entry point. The judgment was mainly done by looking after transition type. Transition type identifies most of such access type. In addition to that, we see particular addresses to judge whether the access is on the web search. As I have told you earlier, one advantage of our scheme is that we minimize the range of logs that we need to analyze by identifying user IDs and tab IDs. These IDs are available because we have collected data on the browser of each user. The way how we trace previous accesses are shown in the next slides. The flowchart on the left shows the process for reconstructing a hazardous path. As discussed in the previous slide, we iteratively identify the previous access record until we identify entry point. The flowchart on the right shows the process to trace the previous access. In this process, first, we check whether the transition type is set to reload. If true, we regard that the current page is the reloaded page. Thus, we run the reload tracing method, identify the latest path access log that has the same tab URL as the previous access, and end the process. If the transition type is not set to reload, we then check whether the source tab ID is set. If yes, we run source tab tracing method, identify the previous access in the source tab identified by the source tab ID by looking up the referring information or by tracing latest past mainframe access record and end the process. If the source tab ID is not set, we believe that the access was continuing from the past access in the same tab. Thus, we run interv tracing method. In the interv tracing method, we find the previous access in the current tab by looking after referral information or by tracing latest past mainframe access record. If we can find proper previous access, we end the process. If not, we will run global tracing method. Global tracing method is not often called because most of the previous accesses are identified before reaching here. If the global tracing method is called, we will find the previous access by finding the referral or origin information or by finding latest past mainframe access record and end the process. In this way, we can find the previous access record. Please note that this process is not too heavy because we can discern browser tab and users. We do not have to look into the entire past access record and we only need to analyze access records inside one tab of a user. That's the advantage of our scheme. This figure shows an example of a reconstructed hazardous path. In this example, the last line shows the identified malicious URL. From that point, we trace back the accesses by running interv tracing and source of tracing method. After running several times, we identified bookmark access record and we regard it as the entry point and stop iterating the tracework process.
Now we extracted hazardous path from the log. For all the malicious access record, we extracted hazardous path. Using the extracted hazardous path, we now analyze user behavior. We analyze the first axis of the hazardous path now. The table in the slides shows the breakdown of the types of entry point of hazardous path. The biggest share was bookmark access, followed by website, session reconstruction, omnibus access, address typing, and start page accesses. Please note that we have link access in the table but this is not supposed to be the entry point type. The reason why we have link access here as an entry point was just because we could not find proper previous accesses. It is most likely due to the way how we analyze log. We analyze logs for each month and count monthly statistics. So any access that continues across two months cannot be traced properly. We could take care of these accesses, but for the ease of analysis, we left this access record untraced. The right figure shows the changes of the shares of the entry point types. As can be seen, the trend remains more or less the same across all months. To confirm the trend, we looked into the logs manually and found out several typical scenarios that led to the malicious URLs. First one is access to a bookmark page, such as link collection page or bulletin board, which led to malicious URLs. Second one is searching the web to obtain the product code, such as the product code of porn video, and research the web with the product code. And finally, accessing malicious illegal pages. Since bookmark access occupies the top share, we will look into the bookmark access in detail. Before that, we would like to define one parameter here. We would like to define a parameter called domain risk level in this slide. Uh, domain risk level is defined as the probability of reaching a malicious URL after visiting a domain. It is the frequency of reaching malicious URLs divided by the number of accesses to the domain. An example is shown in this slide. Domain X is accessed six times. In this figure, six different URLs have been accessed. Among these six accesses, four accesses reach malicious URLs eventually. In this case, the risk level is 4 out of 6, that is 66.7%. Now we will look into the bookmark access in detail. In this slide, we would like to show you the rankings of hazardous bookmark domains. The numbers in the table indicate the access counts and risk levels. The risk level is, as we explained in the previous slide, the probability to reach malicious URLs calculated from the past access records. The left table shows the hazardous bookmark domain rankings per frequencies. This ranking is okay, but it also contains major search engine site, which does not often lead to malicious URLs. Indeed, the probability of reaching malicious URLs from these major website engines are less than 0.2%. The center table shows the hazardous bookmark domain rankings per risk levels. These domains are the domains of the bookmark URL that certainly leads to malicious URLs. For your reference, the right table shows the entire bookmark domain rankings, including both malicious and benign per access counts. As can be seen, the probability of reaching malicious URLs are usually less than 0.1%. From here, if we have a way to sanitize the bookmark entries, or if we have a way to provide alert to users, we should be able to reduce the risk of reaching malicious URLs. Because bookmark access is the major entry point, this kind of solution will be effective.
Now we have shared our analysis result of the entry point of hazardous fire. During the course of the analysis, we define a parameter called domain risk level. From here, we would like to introduce our preemptive domain filtering scheme that uses the domain risk level. The preemptive domain filtering scheme identifies domains that eventually lead users to malicious URLs by using the domain risk level parameter. Different from schemes identifying malicious URLs and domains, the proposed scheme identifies domains that most likely lead to malicious URLs. This figure shows the concept of the proposed scheme. This figure illustrates an example access tree. For example, users accessing domain A access to domain B and domain D. Users accessing domain B access domain C and URL2. And users accessing domain C access URL1. Users accessing domain C certainly reach URL1. Thus, we identify domain C as a hazardous domain. Users accessing domain B eventually reaches either URL1 or URL2, but both of them are malicious. Thus, users accessing domain B certainly reach malicious URL. Therefore, we identify domain B as hazardous domain. In case of users accessing domain E, users eventually access it is a URL4, URL5, or URL7. In this case, the probability of reaching malicious URL is 2 out of 3. Depending on the predefined threshold value, we could identify domain B as a hazardous domain as well. As we have seen in this example here, the proposed scheme identifies domains that most likely lead to malicious URLs. These domains themselves do not necessarily host malicious contents, that many of these are not listed on blacklist at this moment. Risk levels of all domains on the path are calculated, and those domains with a risk level beyond certain threshold value are determined as hazardous. We can minimize the number of users and accesses reaching malicious URLs by filtering traffic on the domains or by providing alerts. By running our preemptive domain filtering scheme, we have identified hazardous domains. The table on the left shows the summary of the identified hazardous domains. The first column describes the domain risk level. The next column describes whether the identified hazardous domains are already listed by Google Safe Browsing. If yes, that means the identified domains are also listed by the Google Safe Browsing. If no, that means the identified domains are not listed by the Google Safe Browsing. If partially, that means that some of the URLs of the identified domains are listed by the Google Safe Browsing. As you can see from this figure, we have identified 467 domains that are not listed by Google Safe Browsing and that surely lead to malicious URLs. The figure on the right describes the changes of the number of the identified domains. The number differs from month to month, but we can see that the proposed scheme can identify no small number of hazardous domains every month. The proposed scheme identifies hazardous domains. By filtering traffic on the hazardous domains, some URLs becomes unreachable. By applying the proposed scheme on the dataset, we checked what kind of URLs became unreachable. The URLs that become unreachable by the traffic blocking at the hazardous domains fall within one of the followings. One, URLs listed on Google Safe Browsing. Two, URLs listed on the other blacklist. Three, non-blacklisted URLs belonging to the same domain as those blacklisted URLs. Four, unreachable URLs. Five, URLs with illegitimate or harmful content. These are not listed by the Alexa Top 1000 site. In any case, 
these URLs that were made unreachable are either malicious, unreachable, illegitimate, or harmful. Thus, blocking them would help improving user protection without impairing users' legitimate activities. In conclusion, we have reconstructed and analyzed hazardous path by collecting access records at the user side, revealing that bookmark access is the largest entry point to hazardous path, and its share is larger on hazardous path than any other path. We have proposed preemptive domain filtering scheme, which identifies domains that most likely lead to malicious URLs, even if these domains do not host any malicious contents. This method enables us to block traffic on these domains or provide alerts. Indeed, we have identified 467 domains that are not listed by Google Search Browsing and um, that surely lead to malicious URLs. There are some limitations of this work, but we hope that our work will contribute to the security of the web. Thank you very much for your kind attention. This concludes my talk. Thank you.